Um, we're gonna start with with uh, if um, with the question if your concept's gonna get stolen. Then we're gonna go ahead and steal other people's concepts, and then we're gonna go do some feedback rounds of uh, games that you guys are working on. Um, hey, Tuchi, how you doing? Um, yeah, so so we are gonna actively steal other people's concepts today. Okay, uh, it's gonna be great fun, I promise you. But for now, look, if I press this button, whoa, it turns green. It's the ugliest uh, green that I've I've seen, uh, and it doesn't fit the background. But that's okay. I'm not an artist. Um, okay, so anyway. I'm diving into it, right? Um, I always like to, to write up my title before um, uh, before I get started. So in this case, it's hippity hoppity. Your game concept is now my property, um, and that's it's gonna make sense at the second topic we're gonna talk about today. But the first one is just generally about people stealing your concept. Okay. So um, what I see all the time is people that say something along the lines of. I don't want to share too much because I don't want my idea to get stolen. Now, I do understand where this sentiment comes from. And, uh, hey, Asa, how you doing? Um, I do understand where this sentiment comes from. And um, I think, no, I believe that this is one of the reasons where if you say this, if you say, I don't want to share my game too much because I don't want my idea to get stolen. Um, if you say this, I believe that's the reason why you are not able to make good games. Um... Uh, oh, yeah, well, yeah, a good point you make there. Uh, people are envious will try to tear it down if you share your plans. Good point. Let's, um, let, let's talk about this after, uh, after I've done the next bit, okay? Because I, I think you actually make a very interesting point there. Um, yeah, okay, I think you're actually making a very good point. So, so we'll definitely, uh, we'll definitely talk about that after this, okay? Um, so yeah, so I understand where the sentiment comes from, but I think it's the reason why you can't make good games. So let's break it down and let's see what the truth actually is, right? And so for the YouTube audience, uh, welcome to Game Death Topics, right? So for those that don't know me, my name is Christopher. Um, welcome to the channel. I make videos that gives you insights in common problems surrounding indie dev and, and indie developers in general. Um, and hopefully I can support you to become a better game developer, but also to create better games that end up making you a lot of money, right? Uh, I also have a, a website, gamedevtopics.com, where you can book like free uh, uh, guidance sessions, either privately or publicly through Twitch. Um, completely free, no subscription, no chargebacks, no nothing, just, you know, uh, one dude helping out people, that's it. Um, but today, today we're looking into the issue of people not sharing their concept because they're afraid it will get stolen. Right. Uh, we're gonna discuss. You know, we're gonna discuss why do people think this way? Why do people uh, think this way? Um, we're gonna discuss uh, um, um, what actually happens. Right. What actually happens? Uh, what actually matters? Uh, that is a good one. Uh, and we're gonna discuss. Um, no, actually, yeah. I I will provide one of my best concepts. I say best. It's the best one I currently have. Uh, I provide one of my best concepts to prove the most important lesson. What a lesson is, you'll find out in a few minutes, um, right? So uh, let's start with the very, very first one. Why do people think this way? Uh, why do people think this way? So um, I see this a lot, especially on Reddit, um, where I see people kind of like, um, well, yeah, people highlight this this mistake quite a bit. Uh, if you go into r slash game dev or r slash indie dev, uh, you will find a lot of posts of people trying to be a little mysterious about their game, also asking for help. And it'll go something along the lines of like, hey, I have this uh, issue uh, around my level design. My level design. Um, can you help me? And then in the description, it'll say something like, uh, I am working on a 2D-ish game with uh, shooting ish mechanics now i hope that the people in the stream can see the issue with this right um this is as vague as it gets i could make it more vague but this is this is pretty accurate to what i see quite often uh, on especially on reddit and reddit this is very prevalent um and so they, they describe everything as vaguely as possible to make sure no one could possibly figure out what they're working on right but consequently this also leads to them not actually getting any answers to their questions, right? Uh, you know, if, if this person is having level design issues for their 2D-ish game with shooting mechanics, um, there's a lot of references you can draw from here, right? 
there's a lot of advice I can give here that's going to be that might be completely wrong, right? So you know this vagueness definitely doesn't help in that respect. But to get to the point, why do people think this way? And I think that's a very simple question to answer uh, because we've been taught that our ideas are valuable. Uh, this is also where the concept of an idea guy comes from. A uh, whole different video. We'll get into that later. Um, not today, but later, later. Um, and uh, it's kind of as if we're only going to have like a few good ideas in our lifetime. Uh, for example, updating Blender every six seconds. Um, that is something that someone thought of. Um, and, and you also like definitely won't be alone having heard something along the lines of imagine being the guy who invented Facebook. Right? We all know who that is. But um, inherently, what we're really saying is you know the what if right what if you are the person sitting on the next facebook what if or in our case what if you are, uh, are the person that is sitting on the next stardew valley but in reality though that is most likely not the case right more importantly um i suppose everyone's very curious about what the people from facebook did once they made their concept they didn't hide it away and try to get like rogue answers on on online forums and shit. they basically told everyone about the revolutionary platform they were creating uh, where you could be updated about your friends activities in real time right and when people showed that interest they created a minimum viable product right in your core loop in this case and then they sent it out into the big wide world to be tested constantly and the same goes for many really really successful games games like uh, minecraft games like stardew valley uh, starbound uh, yes i am counting minecraft as a indie game uh, or at least initially it was uh, maybe not anymore today, but it definitely used to be. Um, all of these games started with very bare-bones alphas. They showed people, they told people about it, people played it. Sure, people stole their concepts, but, uh, you know, they never came out of it with an extra Stardew Valley. They never were the guy that stole from the Stardew Valley guy uh, to make their own Stardew Valley. I said Stardew Valley is like six times in the same sentence. Um, but in conclusion, uh, we're taught to believe that, that you know, these ideas are valuable, right? Uh, uh, we are taught to believe our ideas are valuable when in reality, in reality, uh, they are not. Um, and why? I'll get to that in just a moment. Um, but it also begs the question, okay, do people actually steal our concepts? Right? Do they? Um, short answer? <sighs> Yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Um, probably people do. Um, but the question is flawed. Uh, the question is flawed. Because what the question should really be is... Um, how am I going to word this properly? Mm, what do people, do people do with the concepts they steal? Right? That is a much more important question. Let's, let's take a quick scenario. I have a concept written down. Um, I proudly share it on Reddit uh, because I have a question about level design from a concept like I, I explained before. Um, now there's a Reddit user who sees my concept and thinks to themselves, wow, this is much better of a concept than what I had. And so they copy your concept and paste it into the document and that is it. Now, you know, uh, so if your concept gets stolen, if your concept gets stolen, um, it gets pasted into a document, and that is it, right? And if that is it, um, it brings us to the point of, okay, this user has this concept, but now they have to build it. Now they have to build it, right? And that is the hard part, because they have to turn it into something, something that actually works, and something that solves the problems you are encountering with your concept in the exact same way that you were going to solve those things according to the vision in your own head, right? So execution is key here. And that is something that we'll continue on in just a moment. But for now, I want to touch on one last thing, right? Let's say someone has actually stolen your concept, right? Let's just assume that's the case. The fact, let's put this on a new line. Uh, the fact that someone felt uh, like your concept was good enough to get stolen proves to me that they are not a good game developer. Now, this sounds very harsh, I understand that, but uh, let, let me explain to you why I think that. 
um, this person, right, this Reddit user that, that is stolen your concept, they will end up doing the exact same thing in a few weeks from now, right? Uh, two or three weeks go by, go by, and they will see a new concept. And they will switch onto that, right? Because th this, this Reddit user thought to themselves, wow, this is so much better than what I had, right? Um, they get sidetracked every few weeks because they constantly see new concepts, right? And so they'll never finish the concept that they stole from you, the concept they stole from the guy before you, the guy after you, right? Or the girl, right? Obviously. Um, you know, the, the, that, that's the reality. These people that steal concepts, they're not, you know, they're not experienced enough to actually make something because the people who are good enough to, steal, to, to possibly execute your concept in a way that's even remotely similar to, to what you had in mind, these people, they've got lists upon lists of concepts that they want to work on by themselves, right? They thought already of, of tens or dozens of, of, of concepts that they want to work on. They're not going to bother with your concept because they've got their own little vision in their head for whatever concept it is they're working on now, and they're going to work on that first, okay? So do people actually do their concepts? Yeah, probably. Are those people a threat? Not really. Not really, right? So, uh, like I mentioned at the start of the stream, um, if you want a one-on-one -on -one session uh, uh, for your game, uh, we can either do that through Twitch or just privately through a Discord call or a, a Google Hangouts uh, call. Um, you can just go to my website, gamedevtopics.com, uh, where you can go to the page called Guidance Sessions, and there you can read about what it is, and you can fill in the form, and then we can uh, we can plan something in. It's completely free, no charge max, no subscriptions, no nothing. Uh, I'm trying to have, help out as many people as possible, including myself by having a quick drink whilst I read some of the comments. Um... Yeah, Cube World is a great example. Um... Yeah, it was a very good concept. Um, it did get abandoned, sadly enough. Um, but you could even say, right, you could even say that Cube World was maybe not stolen, but a very close resemblance of, of Minecraft in, in a lot of ways. Um, it was never finished. It was never a threat to Minecraft, uh, even if it seemed that way, maybe at the start. Um, and so it didn't really matter in the end, right? So, uh, continuing on to the most important lesson. Um, God, I can't believe I'm gonna I'm gonna say this. Um, okay, so most important lesson, most important lesson that you will hear from me today. Uh, that's that might not be true. Um, execution is the absolute most important thing in the world. Now you think it to yourself. That's not that bound breaking. That I've heard that before, and it's true. But that's because I haven't gone to the good bit yet. Um, because I, I have touched on this before in this stream, in previous streams, in previous videos, um, but I want to dive like very deep into it right now. When you create a concept um, and you start developing it, you are constantly running into problems that uh, for which you are creating your own custom solutions, right? And with every solution you apply, you're creating a split in the path of where someone stealing your concept might have gone differently, right? And these might be fundamental things, right? Especially at the start, these are fundamental things. And so this becomes like a butterfly effect, right? Where very quickly, you will create a lot of different paths that will lead to very different outcomes. So uh, during development, you will make choices that create diverging paths. Um, this results in very different outcomes. All right, something's like I'm so excited by saying what I'm saying that I forget to type along. Uh, it happens. Um, and so let, let, let's make this theory more practical, right? And let's take a look at a, at a real concept that I have in my large archive of concepts. Um, it's a list that I call things I might make in my life. Uh, I probably won't make 90% of it, but um, maybe I will, right? So I've, I've taken a, a concept out of that. Um, yeah, yeah, you know your concept is good and people remake it into, into Roblox, yeah. Uh, Roblox is an interesting topic, I should make a video about that. I think People Make Games made a video about it. Um, very good video about how shady of a, of a company Roblox is, but anyway, uh, different topic. So, uh, this is a real concept, right? I'm just going to copy paste this in because typing it is long. Um, 
a semi-open world puzzle platformer where the player uses their own life force to spawn platforms which should be used to complete puzzles and challenges to learn more about the origin of the player's character. Right, so this is like a, a, a 3D puzzle platformer, um, and uh, like I just mentioned, you use your own life force, so your own health, uh, to spawn platforms to, you know, complete certain challenges. Now, let's develop this concept, because I, I'm very fond of this concept, and I actually think it's going to be the next concept I'll work on after I'm finished with my current one. Um, but again, if anyone would want to use this concept to develop their own thing, by all means, feel free to. It's totally yours to have. Um, please steal it, take it, do with it whatever you want. Uh, I'm looking forward to the result. Because let, let, let's, let's develop this, right? Uh, imagine, right? I have defined a movement set. Um... But noticed that during uh, playtests, playtests, people find it hard to judge judge the uh, jump distance. Right now, quick side note here: um, I say I've defined a movement set. This is already fundamentally where a lot of choices are made. Have I included dashing? Have I included a double jump, a triple jump? Uh, what is my movement speed like? Uh, what is the gravity like on this this world we're in? Uh, you know, a lot of choices are already made, but we're just assuming that we've both made the exact same concept, the, the exact same movement set, right? Now, I've noticed that people are have a really hard time judging the jump distance. Let's make this interactive. I want to see answers in chat, right? In order to solve this problem, will you... Uh, choose option A, right? Option uh, whoop, option A. Uh, add a character shadow uh, below the character, right? Will you pick that one to solve the problem? Or B, uh, change the camera perspective uh, so that it is so that it is easier to judge the distance. Which option will you pick? Uh, people in chat, please let me know. Um, because yeah, practically this is the best way I can I can define what I mean. So option A, add a character shadow below the but below the character, or option B, change the camera's pr perspective so that it's easier to judge the distance. So previously maybe it was behind the player, now it's to the side of the player, something of the kind. I'm very curious to to hear what you guys think. There is no right and wrong answer here, by the way. Just I'm I'm curious to see what you think, uh, what what you would personally uh, pick. In terms of your option. Okay, Asa is going for A. Uh, okay, um, Larissa is also going for A. Uh, there's a lot of A's. Um, it's fair enough. It's fair enough. Uh, let's have a look. Oh no, I've lost my script. Oh no, there it is. Got it. Uh, so she's going for B. Okay, all right. So. Uh, again, there's no right or wrong answer here, so congratulations for, to you guys for making a choice. You did great. Uh, we'll, we'll have another choice in a second, but. Um, but this is where the first diverging path is created, right? So let's say, let's say we go with A, right? We add a ca character shadow below the character, okay? So we've made one split in the path, right? Now, um, next choice, right? The next choice is, uh, I've noticed after implementing the previous solution, um, after uh, implementing the previous solution, I'm wondering, okay, what do I do in case the player spends all their life force, right? What happens when the player spends all of their life force, right? Now you think to yourself, well, they would die, obviously. Is that obvious? Uh, so option A, will they die and respawn at the last checkpoint? Checkpoint. Or option B, uh, will their speed and jump distance jump distance be uh, reduced until Christ, until they recharge at something like a healing crystal, at a, a healing crystal, you know, forgive the context, but you know, uh, what do you guys do? Option A or option B? Uh, also, is the music too loud? I hope not. Um, I forgot, I forgot to turn it off, but it's kind of nice in my ears, so I don't know if it's too loud. Again, there's no right or wrong answer here. It's just very curious. Okay, cool. All right, so Suchi likes B uh, with uh, reducing speed and jump distance until they recharge at a healing crystal. Asa's going for A, they die and respawn at a checkpoint. 
Okay. Okay. Now, again, it doesn't matter which one you pick. Uh, it really depends on the vision in your head. Um, but again, we've created a diverging path. So first off, we added a character shadow below the character. That was path A. And then again, we have a split in the path where we pick A or B. Right? So now imagine... Uh, imagine, for some of you that's not the case, you can just, you know, out of experience, but imagine you make hundreds upon hundreds, for a dramatic effect, of choices uh, whilst developing your game. Developing your game. If you want to uh, put this into perspective, if it's constantly A-B questions, uh, I might go something like uh, A, B, B, A, B, B, A, 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 B, A, A, B, 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 A, 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 like that. Now, this is only, what, 26 choices? How many characters is this? I don't think it tells me. No, it doesn't. Um, this is maybe like 26 choices. Do you, like, I hope you start to understand that fundamentally at the start of your game, there are so many diverging paths that even if someone steals your concept... They're never ever, or the chance that they end with the same, the exact same result that you have, is so enormously small that even if they did steal your concept, it doesn't matter, right? And again, if people feel like they like this concept that I've I've pitched here today, uh, by all means, take it, make it into something great, uh, sell it for a lot of money. I really hope that it brings success. I really hope it does. Um, this also brings me to the point of, okay, what about reference games? Um, but we'll save that for a different video, because there's definitely enough I can talk there about how to do that properly. Um, but anyway, um, so in order to, to even further enforce my point, I don't know why I did this, but I have. Um, here are my very best concepts. So in case you don't like the previous one, I've got two more lined up. Oh yeah, I've got two more lined up. I really like these. And... Uh, Feeling a little nervous, just giving them away like that, but um, I'll be fine. Um, yeah. Okay, so uh, concept number one. A survival game about surviving the world above and below the sulfur clouds that have turned the world into a hellscape. Uh, collecting materials to upgrade your sul sulfur sailor, that's a mouthful, and to craft new equipment to bring an end to the horrors that hide beneath the clouds. Um... There's quite a bit of narrative design in there, but um, yeah, if you want that concept, I really like it. I'll, I'll work in it after it's somewhere in the queue. Um, but if you if you also don't like that one, don't worry. I've got another one for you. That's right. I've got another one, a very different one. Um, I, uh, so actually, I have already started working on this one already. Um, a factory management game where you work for the devil in hell, processing all of the bodies that are sent to hell. Uh, as you process the bodies, you can use the parts and turn them into weapons in order to defend hell from the invading angels. Um, yeah. Also, I have a prototype of this already uh, in my uh, in my list of Unreal Engine projects. Um, it was a very interesting project. It's it's interesting how all of those systems work, especially conveyor belts and stuff like that. It's man, that was hell figuring that out. Uh, yeah, take any two of these concepts or any of the pr previous one as well, three, uh, if you want them. Um, I'd love for these games to be made into full working things because I love the idea of these things, and if I can play that without having to develop them myself, then that's awesome. Uh, that'd be really cool. Uh, so yeah, feel free to steal these for completely free if you want. Um, so, to conclude the this topic, right? Conclusion, because uh, that's important. We got we gotta have a conclusion. Um, because what I'm really trying to achieve here is um, that uh, you stop being scared, scared of uh, your concept getting stolen. That is the most important thing, um, because most people won't, and even if someone does, that person is. 99 out of 100 times not good enough in, in their own scales to actually turn it into something really good. Um, especially considering that there are so many choices made that, you know, the chance of ending up with the exact same result that you had in mind is is basically not that high. Uh, not that high at all. Um, and there's an extra bit of knowledge here. Uh, for those that have stuck around all the way until now, until the end of the topic. If you do not share the concept you're working on, then you're essentially working against yourself. Um, this song is annoying. There we go. Uh, you're essentially working against yourself. 
because imagine asking people online for help with something, with a problem. Uh, but because you are described the game very vaguely, they have to kind of make their own assumptions about what you're working on. Potentially leading you to getting the wrong advice, right? Because subtle differences in what you had in mind can wildly vary the the advice that's given, the level of that advice, and, and what it's supposed to do for you. Um, so it would really suck, right? Or at least I think so. I think it would really suck if your game wasn't that great in the end because you followed the advice that was that just wasn't perfect for your concept, right? because you didn't share your concept, right? Uh, and on top of that, you know, as an extra conclusion, uh, you have a few new concepts to add to your list if you like them. Obviously, you don't have to. Uh, of course, you don't have to. Um, but um, yeah, if you, if you want them, they're there. Now, very last thing for this uh, for this particular topic. Um, if you're thinking to yourself that you'd love to talk more about these kinds of topics constantly, all the time, um, then I've got great news for you because on my Twitch page, yeah, I figured that out. Uh, on my Twitch page, there's a new Game Dev Topics Discord where you can go there and you can join and you can talk to like-minded indie developers or AAA developers and get advice and feedback and things like that really easily and really quickly. Um, and it helps kind of bridge the gap between the two weeks of like between streams, right? If you have a question for me, that is by far the easiest way to reach me because I don't have Twitter, don't have Instagram, don't have TikTok. Uh, I do actually, I think it's on the screen, but I don't use TikTok. Um, so if you have a question and you need it answered, that's the way to go. It's it's a, it's a link on, on the Twitch channel. Um, so yeah, uh, feel free to do that. So, God, okay. That was the topic of why your concept won't get stolen. If it does, it doesn't matter. Um.